It is yellow in the sun. You have been mistaken if you have always believed that our star might be described as a brilliant yellow ball of fire. One thing to note is that it is not yellow. It has a green hue. In a sense, by analyzing the color spectrum that a star emits, scientists are able to establish the temperature of the star. Since every color has its own wavelength, astronomers are able to determine the temperature of a star by measuring the wavelengths involved. Brighter stars have a reddish hue. It appears that the most beautiful stars are blue. The majority of the energy that our sun emits is at a wavelength that is relatively near to green. All of these hues, however, combine with one another due to the fact that it also emits other wavelengths, and your eyes perceive this colorful blend as being white. If, from the International Space Station, one were to observe the sun, this would be the case. Due to the fact that our atmosphere is so effective at deflecting blue light, the sun appears yellow when viewed from this vantage point on Earth. Because of the absence of all of that blue wavelength, all of the other colors come together to form yellow. In the event that our star was genuinely yellow, it would be approximately 800 degrees Celsius, 1,400 degrees Fahrenheit, cooler, the habitable zone of our solar system would decrease, and the Earth would transform into a frozen, lifeless rock. On the other hand, that is not the only thing you missed the mark on. Fire is raging in the sun. Even though it is quite hot, the sun is not on fire. Oxygen and fuel undergo a chemical reaction during the burning process. Our sun, like the majority of other stars in the universe, is a gaseous ball that is primarily composed of hydrogen and helium. Within it, there is not a great deal of oxygen. On the contrary, it functions more like a massive nuclear reactor, continuously fusing hydrogen atoms to produce helium within its core. Due to the fact that this process releases vast amounts of energy, the sun is able to maintain its extremely high temperature. Shockwaves in outer space. While we are on the subject of igniting things, allow me to tell you about explosions that occur in space. It's true that these aren't real. There is no air in space, hence a starship cannot be destroyed by a powerful explosion. This is because there is no air in space. Without air, there is no oxygen. As you are already aware, the absence of oxygen results in the absence of fire. Fans of Star Wars, I apologize. It is impossible to count the stars. If you look up at the night sky, you could get the impression that there are too many stars for you to count. But the truth is that you can. With that being said, researchers at Harvard have already completed the task for you. It has been determined by the Yale Bright Star Catalog that there are 9,110 stars that can be observed by the naked eye from the surface of the Earth. Do your best to count each and every one of them. It is impossible to flight across an asteroid belt. Movies give the impression that in order to navigate the asteroid belt, one must possess an exceptionally high level of piloting expertise. It is not the case, however. There is no such thing as a dense obstacle course of death that is the asteroid belt. It does contain trillions of space rocks, which range in size from space dust to a fourth of the size of the moon. Additionally, it contains space dust. Around 100,000 of these asteroids have a width of more than 1 kilometer, 0.6 miles. Nevertheless, they are highly dispersed. 225 million kilometers, 140 million miles, is the width of the asteroid belt that extends between Mars and Jupiter. That is equivalent to one and a half times the distance that separates the Sun and the Earth. By doing so, the space rocks are dispersed to a distance of millions of kilometers. If a spacecraft were to collide with one, it would be extremely low probability. Instantaneously, you can freeze in space. It is not likely that you would immediately transform into a popsicle if you were to be flung out of the airlock and into the emptiness of space. This is due to the fact that in order for water to freeze, there must be a transfer of heat from space to the body. The vacuum of space, on the other hand, does not allow heat or cold to travel very quickly. It would take several hours for your body to truly freeze, but it would happen. At that point, you would have already passed away from another cause. In outer space, you explode. Absolutely not, 
you would not detonate in space either. On the other hand, you would balloon. This occurs because the nitrogen that is present in your bloodstream would condense into bubbles, which would cause you to become twice as large. On the other hand, that is not what is going to do you in. There is a deficiency of oxygen. Due to the fact that your brain would not receive sufficient oxygen through your bloodstream after 15 seconds in space, you would lose consciousness. During your time in space, your other organs would begin to shut down one by one after two minutes. Exit the game. It is chilly in space. Despite appearances, space is not so frigid as it may appear. For all intents and purposes, space does not have a temperature at all. The rate at which particles move and the quantity of energy that they possess are the most important factors in determining temperature. When space is completely devoid of particles, there are no particles that can be moved around. Because of this, the vacuum does not have any temperature. The vacuum that exists in outer space is not, of course, perfect. Particles and radiation are still present, which allows it to generate heat. Certain regions of space, such as the space around stars, are actually quite exceptionally hot. However, the further distant you are from stars, the more dispersed the particles are, which results in those regions of space being quite cold. There are some dense gas clouds that can reach temperatures as low as minus 263 degrees Celsius, minus 440 degrees Fahrenheit. It is Mercury that is the hottest planet. The planet that is nearest to the Sun is called Mercury. Surprisingly, however, it is certainly not the hottest. However, it is an extreme case. Its surface temperature can exceed 430 degrees Celsius, 800 degrees Fahrenheit, during the day. Temperatures drop to minus 180 degrees Celsius, minus 290 degrees Fahrenheit, during the night. Oh no! Nevertheless, Venus is the planet in the solar system that is the most dreadful. Because Mercury does not have an atmosphere, it is unable to retain all of the heat that is generated by the Sun. Venus, on the other hand, has an extremely dense atmosphere, which results in the formation of a greenhouse effect around the planet. This is like the warming of the planet on steroids. Venus's surface temperature is approximately 475 degrees Celsius, 900 degrees Fahrenheit, which makes it a fiery hell. The solar system continues to exist unabated. It is not true that our entire solar system is located in a single location within our galaxy. It is traveling across space at a speed of 220 kilometers per second, 140 miles per second. Seven times quicker than the speed at which the Earth spins around the Sun is the speed mentioned here. Around the Milky Way, it takes our solar system 230 million years to complete one orbit around the galaxy. During the time that we were in the same area as we are right now, the Earth consisted of a single supercontinent, and dinosaurs had just begun to roam around. As the Sun orbits the planets, it is not true that planets revolve around the Sun. Every single component in our solar system is in a state of equilibrium. In addition, despite the fact that the Sun is the most massive object in our neighborhood of planets, other planets are also taking part in this gravitational tug-of-war. The planets and moons do not revolve around the Sun, rather, they revolve around a central point that is located between them and our star. We refer to this particular place as the barycenter. Considering that this barycenter is so close to the core of the Sun, there is not much of a difference between the two for Earth. This location, on the other hand, is around 55,000 kilometers, 35,000 miles, distant from the core of the Sun for Jupiter. Indeed, the gas giant and the Sun are in a mutual orbit around one another. This planet is a sphere. When viewed from orbit, the Earth looks to be spherical, however, it is actually an ellipsoid with an irregular shape. At the equator, it is enlarged as a result of the centrifugal force that is brought about by the rotation of our planet. Earth is approximately 43 kilometers, 27 miles, wider at the equator than it is at the poles as a consequence of this. Because of this, the gravitational pull at the bulge is slightly reduced, 
which makes it simpler to launch spacecraft from the equatorial areas as opposed to the poles on the planet. In the vastness of space, there is no sound. There is no one who can hear your screams in space. Up to a certain point, that is correct. It is necessary for sound to move across a medium. In addition, because molecules are so far apart in space, the noises gradually disappear before they have a chance to travel very far. In the instant when you are able to hear them, all of the cosmic disasters, supernovas, and crashing black holes go quietly quiet. Nevertheless, there are regions in space that contain a great deal of particles that sound can pass through. Similar to the cloud of hot gas that surrounds the black hole that is located at the center of the Perseus Galaxy Cluster. You can really hear the black hole because it contains such a large amount of gas.